that's cool that you think I'm cool. I don't care or anything, but you know, it's cool. Diane Nguyen is a person of contradictions. She's a diehard feminist whose best friend can be a womanizing asshole. Rehab is not a cure-all that's gonna suddenly make you not an asshole. She embraces selfless causes with so much single-mindedness it can make her self-centered. Do you know you're breaking the law by giving everybody water? It's okay, I want the water. Yeah, we all want water. That's not the point. She wants to make a difference, but she settles for writing think pieces for a vapid online blog. I thought I was gonna be doing really important work. You know, just writing stuff that makes a difference. And then you gotta fall into one thing and then another. And she doesn't wanna hurt people, but she encourages her ex-husband to cheat on his new girlfriend with her. While Mr. Peanut Butter can be summed up in the word optimistic, I'm just gonna go with the flow and leave everything up to destiny. Princess Carolyn, driven. Laura, hold my calls, cancel everything. Ahab's got a white whale to catch, baby. And Todd, carefree. <sighs> Why so gloomy, Rumi? Diane struggles to pinpoint a fixed personal outlook or philosophy. Diane often finds herself in a similar position to Bojack Horseman's audience. Clear-eyed and certain in one moment. You don't think this is incredibly disrespectful to the women who actually get abortions? Only to question her stance and become unsure how she should feel in the next. That was surprisingly tasteful. And educational, right? Yeah, weirdly educational. Diane, with her high-mindedness, neuroses, and contradictions, reflects the outlook of the show itself. Its dark honesty, its conscience, its desire to make a positive impact, coupled with a cynicism about the world we live in, even its ambivalence about its own star, Bojack. I really wanted you to like me, Diane. I know. So while many viewers may see themselves in BoJack, it's Diane whom the show wants us to really listen to. The voice in BoJack's head and in ours, Diane is the show's soul. So let's look at how this character reveals to us BoJack Horseman's deeper outlook, values, and philosophy. Do you think I'm a good person? Deep down. That's the thing. I don't think I believe in deep down. I kind of think all you are is just the things that you do. Before we go on, we want to talk a little bit about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a superb online learning community with thousands of classes about everything, photography, illustration, music production. Click the link in the description below to get two months access to all classes for free. Either you know what you want and then you don't get what you want, or you get what you want and then you don't know what you want. One of Diane's defining characteristics is that she's crippled by uncertainty. And that way, everybody knows what I want. And I know what I want. Uh, which is what everyone wants, and it's really clear, and nobody's confused about anything. Even though she achieves lofty feats with relative ease, she waffles over what to do in her career. She keeps changing her mind about her relationships and doubts she can ever really be happy. I don't know if I believe in it, real lasting happiness. She tries to make change in the world, but she also gets scared in over her head and gives up. I really thought I could do it. I thought I could go far away and help people and be this best possible version of myself. And what happened? I couldn't. I wasn't the person I thought I was. It's exactly this sort of flip-flopping that makes Diane such a relatable character. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't be a trusted news source or an authority or a role model for anybody. Like many of us, she can be so sure one moment and then everything changes in the next. Why would you do this? It's what you always wanted, right? It's too much. I didn't want it like this. Like what? I don't know. She wants to hold firm to her principles, but her circumstances keep changing. She herself keeps changing. Because maybe I am cool, sexy Diane, or really in touch with her feelings, Diane, or possibly other Dianes we don't even know about yet. TV characters are traditionally a lot more consistent in their stances and opinions. And remember, if I am harsh with you, it is only because you're doing it wrong. But Diane's back and forth is closer to how life works for a lot of people. Do you know how much trouble we could get in? There's a policeman in our front yard. Uh-oh, here comes a responsible suburban housewife. You're right. Let's get out of here. So now you're just gonna do whatever a teenage girl says? Diane's desire for the ease of certainty is a big part of her attraction to Mr. Peanut Butter. 
She loves that Mr. Peanut Butter is uncomplicated, optimistic, and completely lacking self-doubt. Honey, relax. Getting married is easy. But time and time again, she also pulls away from him because of that very simplicity. I don't want to be one of those couples that settles into a routine and never changes. Well, I don't know what to say because I'm an old dog and I'm not going to change. Diane struggles most of all with how to deal with Bojack, who's so similar to her in some ways. You know, I think we're alike in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's funny. I always tell people you're like the not cool version of me. And sometimes that's great, but it also means we can bring out the worst in each other. On the one hand, Diane believes it's important to hold Bojack responsible for his bad behavior. Explain to me how Sarah Lynn's overdose was really rough for you. Shut up. You feel a lot of guilt about that? And on the other, she understands him better than anyone else does. But you're my best friend and you need me. She feels his pain and wants to support his desire to be better. The last time I saw you, you said you still believed I could be a better person. Do you still believe that? I do. Both of these viewpoints are valid and right, which tells us the source of Diane's constant waffling isn't some lack of a backbone. It comes from the fact that she's a complex thinker who sees things from all sides, and the truth is many-sided. I think there's more to this story. What are we missing? If you make the effort to look that deeply into the nuance in any situation, like Diane, you're going to end up driving yourself into a state of paralysis a lot of the time. Staring at the complexity and contradictions of life is exactly what Bojack Horseman the series is doing too. And it's often using Diane's eyes to do it. So the series encourages us to try on Diane's glasses for size. She isn't sure where she's going or how she'll get there, but she's not going to gloss over the truth or be satisfied with some simplified reductionist view of the world. I don't want you or anyone else justifying their shitty behavior because of the show. And she's not giving up. I'm not giving up. There's gotta be someone who will talk. Here is Diane's greatest strength. She always tries to operate under a code of selflessness. This is what's wrong with society. Diane. Nobody thinks about the world outside themselves. Diane speaks out against wrongs. She makes grand gestures. She fights to steer her friends and her society toward her morals, often at great personal cost. Those are death threats. People want to murder my wife because of what she's saying on the news. She speaks out about misconduct allegations against Hank Hippopopoulos. What do you have against Tank Hippopopoulos? Everyone says he's a really nice guy. Good point. That's exactly the problem. Because he's so nice, people don't want to think he's capable of awful things, so they let him off the hook. Even though this threatens her husband's new job at a point when they're having money troubles. Hey, do me a favor. Please don't make a big thing out of this. It's really not a good time, you know, with my show about to launch. But Diane's driven by an innate instinct to do what she thinks is right first and only think about self-preservation or what she gets out of it later. Of course, Diane's humanitarian pursuits don't mean she can't be selfish. Diane's focus on her principles frequently makes her self-absorbed and insensitive to those around her. You were my friend, and you hurt my feelings. And it's weird that you never apologized for that, and that you still won't. In Mr. Peanut Butter's eyes, going after Hank Hippopopoulos is a betrayal of him. This game show is a really big deal for me. And I know that sounds stupid to you and small, but I need this to go well. Others might call it a self-destructive streak. Oh, I'm gonna drop it all right. They don't even know how much I'm gonna drop it. The way you said that kind of made it sound like you're not gonna drop it. And like Bojack, Diane does have a tendency to slip into vicious cycles of negativity. Why can't I be happy? Am I busted? But whereas Bojack's selfishness often drags him down into repeating the same mistakes, Diane finds a strength in fighting for her ideals that balances her impulse to self-sabotage. Her will to do good gives her a sense of purpose. But then I think about Sebastian St. Clair and going to work with him, helping people and making a difference. And I feel like I have a reason to get out of bed. It allows her to value herself and pull herself up from low points. Diane captures the type of the modern liberal intellectual youth, a sort of person who's very likely to be watching this show. I'm Sarah Koenig. This is one ringtone told over the course of several rings, and the story it's telling you is to answer your phone. 
Her convictions about the world make her relatable for a lot of millennials who share her opinions on feminism and social justice. Well, the bar for men is depressingly low. Just sprinkle in a few words like intersectionality or microaggressions and Vice News will name you Feminist of the Year. On the surface, Diane's politics seem to align easily with dominant stances in today's politically correct world. And she's often perceived as self-righteously annoying by those around her. They're adorable. Not that I value them based on their looks, because, of course, children in society today are often reduced to their cuteness. I can't wait to get to know your children as people so I can specifically compliment them individually on the foundation of their character. But she really believes in these ideals, and she's been trying to change people's minds for a long time to no avail. So to Diane, these efforts more often feel like a losing battle. This is not over. When people hear- Give it a rest. It's over. You lost. After her speaking out against Hank Hippopopoulos leads nowhere, the episode ends with this moment. Hey, smile. Notably, not just this season two moment, but even all of season five was written before the Me Too movement. So she's far from just going along with what's in vogue in her times. And no matter how many times she gets knocked down, she finds a way to bounce back. I think we made a difference. A small one, but a difference. Sooner or later, she's seized with the energy to fight for another cause that just might help change the world, even though it probably won't. You just passed sensible gun legislation. I can't believe this country hates women more than it loves guns. No? She is the conscience of Bojack Horseman, always trying to follow her moral compass towards true north. But while we can applaud Diane's righteous crusades, even more admirable is her ability to forgive. After discovering Bojack's most shameful past, Diane is there for him, bringing him to rehab and explaining her philosophy that makes way for his redemption. There's no such thing as bad guys or good guys. We're all just guys who do good stuff sometimes and bad stuff sometimes, and all we can do is try to do less bad stuff and more good stuff. Diane can at once condemn his behavior and forgive the actor because she believes in moving forward from past mistakes. In Diane's eyes, we are all people who have done good and bad things and who are capable of so much more. She encourages Bojack and us to try harder to be better. You need to take responsibility for yourself. For all the uncertainty in her life, when it comes to her craft, Diane has a writer's instinct for brutal honesty. I think the truth is worth pursuing, no matter what. She's a shrewd observer who calls it like she sees it. You listen, nod, and say all the right things when we tell you our stories. But you still can't actually know what it feels like to constantly have your guard up. When Sebastian St. Clair lures her to Cordovia to bring him some good publicity, what comes out of her pen is instead a savagely candid portrait of this do-gooder's narcissism. Pilot. The second thing you notice about Sebastian St. Clair is how much he talks about himself. And of course, in season one, she and Bojack fall out because she insists on telling the truth, warts and all, in his book. Well, I realized that the best way to fully capture you, warts and all... This isn't warts and all. It's just warts. Where's the all? I come off like a total asshole. Diane is a bit of a misfit in LA, where show business trains everyone to be nice and tell others what they want to hear. You are in the prime of your life. Never look better. But Diane's warts and all candor is exactly what this Hollywood set show is aiming to achieve. Brutal honesty is the source of the series' humor, its pathos, and its popularity. You know what's gonna happen? You're gonna win that Oscar, and you're gonna go up on that stage and give your little speech, and then you're gonna go home, and you're gonna be so miserable you'll wanna kill yourself. Indeed, at times, Diane feels like a stand-in for the show's creator and writers. In season five, we get a pretty meta moment when Diane tries to show Bojack the error of his ways by creating a despicable villain out of his starring role in Filbert, only for the audience to love the anti-hero she made. I made him more vulnerable, and that made him more likable, which makes for a better TV show, but if Filbert is just a way to help dumb assholes rationalize their own awful behavior, well, I'm sorry, but 
We can't put this out there. This seems like the show grappling with its own portrayal of an anti-hero. Were the creators perhaps taken by surprise that so many viewers out there relate to Bojack and identify with him uncritically instead of condemning his behavior? Diane the writer is the show's own gaze observing Bojack. She loves her friend, but she also sees the worst in him with total clarity. You're the biggest asshole I know, and you're the only thing that makes sense to me. Countering Diane's writerly instinct for harsh, unfiltered candor is also a creative warmth and a love of what entertainment can do. I can write you the standard empty calorie celebrity tell some if that's what you're looking for, but I thought you might want more than that. I do. Well, then you're going to have to open up and give me something real. She did come to Hollywood after all, and even when she's doing jobs like running Bojack's Twitter account, she manages to have a lot of fun. Yesterday I dropped my phone in the bathroom, which made Bojack's Instagram post a picture of the floor with the caption, Spudjub? That got 4,000 likes. It's worth remembering that a big part of why Diane connects with Bojack in the first place is because she loved horsing around as a kid. And for half an hour every week, I had a home and it helped me survive. While the show is constantly derided in BoJack's present day, Yes, but it sucked. It didn't suck! This creation meant something to Diane as a kid. It offered her an important escape during her difficult childhood. The show drops a lot of hints about how much it meant to BoJack, too. A lot of people still see you as a guy from that sucky show from the 90s. Horsin' Around was not a sucky show. The critical establishment may laud him for Secretariat, a movie in which he was ultimately replaced by CGI, but Horsin' Around is the more honest reflection of the particular gift he had to offer the world. How'd you get her to come back down? Let's just say I made her an offer she couldn't refuse. So even if Bojack Horseman gets laughs at the expense of the 90s sitcom formula, it also subtly shows appreciation for any piece of art or entertainment that brings genuine, unpretentious fun and joy into people's lives. Of course, that's the heart of what this show also exists to do. Okay, all right, there's no need to get... What, caddy? Are you gonna say caddy? I was not gonna say caddy. The job of the writer is to reflect the world truthfully without reducing its complexity. Like the show, Diane won't gloss over her world's absurdities and problems. Ugh, this town is full of hypocrites. They act all shocked when one of their favorite stars turns out to be a dirtbag, but they can't wait to give a comeback to all the dirtbags we already know about. Yet, crucially, she extends compassion to the people around her because they're so flawed and need mercy. Without Diane, Bojack the show would be lacking a soul, just as Bojack's life would be pretty empty without his friend who truly gets him and challenges him. You know me better than anybody and you can't not be a part of my life. As the voice and perspective of the series itself, Diane reminds us that it's okay if we don't always know what we're doing all the time, that it matters to speak up, and that we can always get back up after we fall. She shows it takes strength to tell the truth, and this is the key component of any writing that has a chance of being any good. So while she might find it easier to be like one of the other characters with a fixed, static approach to life, the beauty of Diane is that she's always evolving, never sure, and ever real. I was this badass overachiever that had these big plans to change the world. Yeah? What happened? Oh, you didn't hear? I changed the world. This is Ellen Lupton. Ellen is the senior curator of contemporary design at Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum, and she teaches a class on poster design on Skillshare. We're going to look at amazing posters from the history of the medium, and we're going to explore them in terms of the language of visual communications. This is why we love Skillshare's service. The classes are taught by amazing, accomplished working professionals in design, photography, social media, business, entrepreneurship, and more. In fact, Skillshare has actually helped us at Screen Prism learn more about animation and design. They offer 20,000 classes about any skill you might want to learn all for less than $10 a month. Right now, you can get two months access to all their classes for free. But that's only if you're one of the first 500 people to click the link in our description below. It's a great deal, so hurry up and don't miss out.